Books is a company that's been on my radar for a while, but whose books I've never really gotten around to picking up. They are a company who's built a solid reputation for very, very well-written books about video games, both on the computer and the PC, and not just like, you know, IBM x86, but like Giga, ZX Spectrum, you name it. All of them having incredibly solid production values in terms of the layout of the books, um, the photography that is featured in the books, the quality of the materials used. I don't just mean the games they're covering either, and multiple books on the spectrum, but also like a cover, a binding, the paper, all of it. The book I'm reviewing today, CRPG book, is no exception. Now, the CRPG book does what it says on the cover. It runs down the history of computer role-playing games, console games, generally excluded, except for when they jump over to the PC side of things from the 1970s all the way to the present day. Rundown is broken down by decade for the first person portion of the book, then by five years span later on. Each section includes a quick primer of what else was going on in the games industry as an art form in general to give context. Stuff like release date for games like Doom and Quake, along with home consoles as the Xbox, as those had impacts that would in turn spill over to CRPG. Either by changing the style of the game to reflect the advantages that new technologies or new hardware um, provides, or releasing a game on both console and PC and having to design the game interface to reflect that. Um, or for that matter, new styles of games becoming in vogue, first-person shooters changing the way that we play games in person. Not just talking like Doom here, Wolfenstein, uh, but like with Wolfenstein and that sort of thing, how its impacts okay, and ultimately leads into stuff like not necessarily Ultimate One Underworld, but like the like well, you know, the whole Elder Scrolls series. Yes, Bethesda did their other first-person game, you know. It is important to mention what this book is not. This is not a book of 150 games to play before you die. Some of these games have aged badly, and the writers often, always, recognize that. Some games are just bad, but they're an interesting bad. They're an interesting bad. They're, so, they're like... They're like Miami Connect, where it's a game made with heart, with some interesting ideas, but the execution. Some games are failures in the sense of they, they are just bad, not even interestingly bad, but somebody interesting worked on them. And so you can kind of see a little bit of, oh, they went from here to these interesting things and learned these lessons from the game. They know they learned not to step on this rake again from making this game. Other games are, are lacking quality of life improvement. Make them Difficult for people to play now. Stuff like if added difficulties for saving or have mechanic the mechanical quirks to make the game more special. Casting spells by drawing runes in the air with your mouse cursor. And in the ca those cases, and some of them, the contributor thinks, that, oh, that's not a problem and you should just, you know, get good. And that leads to the book's weak. And also to a degree. This book has a massive number of contributors. Uh, three pages, very, very small written text, uh, three columns. You know, like this. And as you can see, sort of, there's also a bit of the weakness here in terms of how they are presented because they're presented with like a one with like a two sometimes three letter initials after each entry in the at the very end of that entry and so if you want to know who wrote a contribution you got to double back and check and that's not the listings there are not are somewhat in alphabetical order but not completely and that makes things complicated because games are a matter of taste I don't like a nice balance of narrative and uh, I like a degree of quality of life improvements. I like 
my games did not have encumbrance for money. I always find like that is unnecessarily stupid or um, or obtuse, especially if you don't have avenues in the game to put that money someplace and come back for it later, for example. And so because these are all matters of taste, it is helpful to know who is writing an entry in terms of, okay, this person likes this book or likes this game. I also liked these other games or they are, they liked these other games, which have mechanics that appeal to me or based on what they've written appeals to me less. So by looking at this, I should know, okay, this is a game I should definitely play. Or maybe this is a game that maybe isn't my thing, but I might want to look up a let's play or maybe just give this a miss entirely. And I can't help but feel this could have been presented. It works well enough, but it adds a little bit of like flipping back and forth. Um, having a little bit more of a column inch or something just put to, okay, here's a more clear description of the name and we're going to, of the, the contributor and we'll just bump it to the front so you can tell early on. Well, like I, I dig it. That said, ultimately, I enjoyed this book. I read it cover to cover. It made me wish that there were, like, the game that game tracking websites like Completionator and that sort of thing, rather than just a general wish list, had a, or just game collection sites, had a way to say, oh, these are games that I want to play. Not just necessarily, I want to have this in my collection, but I want to play this. And. There isn't an easy way to do that in this. This this is a book that will expand the the number of role playing games that you want to you will find yourself wanting to play. Guarantee I guarantee you will come out of this book wanting to buy or otherwise play if it's available for one or one this one d six minimum role playing game. As of this writing recording, I should say it is still available for purchase directly from Bitmap Books. And if you're intimidated by taking this massive tome with you on the train while you're waiting for your book to show up, they also give you a PDF download. So you can also download that, load it on your tablet, and then read that while you're on the train. And then when you get back home, pick up where you were in the actual physical. Um, and in the event, though, later down the road, you pick the, you are watching this video and it's sold out permanently. I do recommend keeping an eye on your friendly local used bookseller, Powell's or what have you, to see if a copy becomes available. Because this is very much a book worthy of an inclusion in your collection. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. 